Good morning. Friday at 3 Eastern time was the baseball trading deadline. And that means so very little to most people, except that very night, two teams were playing and both of those teams traded away half of their team. Wasn't that odd that both the Nationals and the Cubs went full sale get rid of everybody, and then they played each other that night. And they had to introduce each other, you know, not only to each other, but to the other team, you know, that no one knows who any of these people are. Ah, well, I can't say anything because the Cubs didn't get, or the Cardinals didn't get any better either. So anyway, just one of those things, I guess. Um, thank you to everyone who helped out with the um, service on Thursday for Pat Ammons. Just a little, uh, just a quick survey. How many people lost power Thursday morning? Okay. Did it come back on relatively quickly for you? 20 minutes. Hmm. Mine was off for 14 hours. But that's okay. I can live. Not a problem. The problem was I had come down Wednesday night to turn on the air conditioning for the for service on Thursday because I learned from your mom's service that morning, you do it that morning, that's not soon enough. You got to do it the night before, right? So I was all just ready and raring, thinking this is going to be a great day. Get down here and it's hot again. <sighs> Thank you, ComEd. And you know we'll see a great reduction in our bill, right? <clears throat> Let's see, other announcements that have been on the screen. Uh, the men's gathering coming up. This week, uh, Valley West Hospital is always looking for volunteers. The flowers are in memory of Pat. Uh, Operation Christmas Child and the camp program are there for your reading. Any other announcements for the good of the community? See, I saw Karen walking around with a jersey on the other day, and I thought maybe she got called up. Because, you know, they, <laughs> they need everybody right now. Any announcements? Did everybody get a communion cup? Okay, good deal. If there are no other announcements, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand if you are able and join in our call to worship. Lead a life worthy of your calling. We cannot do this alone, so we gather as God's people. Lead a life filled with the gifts of your calling, gifts to be used with service and meekness. We come to build up Christ's body with patience and love. Lead a life which reflects your calling, that life of peace grounded in the Spirit. We gather as God's family at the table, prepared for us, waiting to be fed by the bread of life. Let us pray. Most loving God, you are the holy joy that first sent the stars spinning across space, that creative joy that destines life on this earth, the loving joy that created humanity to crave 
for your fellowship, the redeeming joy that became human flesh in Jesus of Nazareth, and the deathless joy that promises to complete all that you have so wonderfully commenced. Scatter our doubts and stir any dismal spirits that we may worship you with a joy which reflects your delight in all that you have made. For we gather to worship in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. When we seek to romanticize what we have failed to live as faithful people, God refuses to go along, waiting for us to confess our sins. Let us join together as God's children, lifting our prayers to the one who is generous in love. Father, to confront those deeds which do not please you is not easy. We are so intent on indulging our appetites and slaking our thirsts we cannot taste that bread which gives life. We spend so much of our lives bemoaning the acts of others. We have no time to look in the mirror and see our secret faces. Forgive us and teach the inner being and heal us 
so we might know joy and gladness, create new hearts within us so that they may beat as one with each other and with your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Despite our sin, God chooses to forgive us. Seeing our emptiness, God chooses to feed us. Holding our shattered hearts, God chooses to heal us. This is the good news. God loves us. God has graced us with mercy and created new life from our brokenness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us be the people of God in prayer. Gentle God, we have traveled through many waters to reach this place, but we share one baptism. We arrive from different backgrounds and traditions, yet share one faith. We are, each of us, unique and precious to God and yet we are members of one body. We have different dreams and doubts, yet our hearts beat with one hope. We are graced and blessed with different gifts so that we may offer them in service to one Lord. We seek your blessings on the people of this world. Tear us away from all that evades the truth and thereby adds to misery. Gather us in towards your light and love and peace. Let your spirit challenge and transform communities where racism or injustice are accepted as normal or even lauded as a good thing. Break through those closed minds and soften those hard hearts that the inclusive love of Christ may be embraced and celebrated. Let your spirit challenge and transform families that foster arrogance or disrespect of each other. Bring to account those who cultivate indifference towards their needy neighbors and esteem the plundering of the weak and the vulnerable. That free of self-justification and relying totally on your grace, who give our best without counting the cost and accept our limitations. Loving God, you alone know both our need and its best remedy. Save those who cry for your help and those who feel unable to even do that. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, those shared amongst us who are suffering the disabling effects of COVID or some other disease, those whose lives have been shattered by natural disaster, those whose aches and pains are more than they can take. Hear also the joys of your people that Surgery has been successful. Children who did not know you have become acquainted, even caught fire for your love 
and service towards others. Thank you most for the joy of knowing you and serving you. Hear also those prayers that are known only through Christ Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. We turn our hearts to the scriptures, continuing on where we left off in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, verses 35 through 45. Jesus said, oh, let's see. Yeah, that's right. Oh, 25 through 35. Ah, goodness sakes. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one that he has sent. They answered, "Show show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say that Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. How many people grew up watching Bugs Bunny? How many people believe that those are the best cartoons ever made? In 1948, Chuck Jones uh, directed the cartoon Rabbit Punch. And in this cartoon, Bugs Bunny is challenged by the big guy. You see him. And he is listed at the beginning of the cartoon as being 300 and some pounds with a record of 400 to nothing, including so many homicides. And Bugs Bunny, oh, and and his, his, his nickname is The Killer. But before the fight begins, the referee reminds these two boxers of the rules. They stand toe to toe as the referee pulls down a microphone from the sky and explains the rules. Now, we want a good clean fight. No sucker punches or blows below the the waist, touch gloves and, and when I say go to your corner, go there and stay there and don't come out until you hear the bell. And may the best man win. Of course, Bugs Bunny asks the referee for the definition of those unclean fighting moves. Now, it wouldn't be right to hit him here. And he sucker punches the big guy. Of course not, the the referee responds. And as you can imagine, Bugs continues this line of reasoning by demonstrating every illegal boxing move on his opponent and... The final punch is directly at the opponent's gut, which causes him to double over and lose the match. Gut feelings, gut instincts, 
gut responses, gut issues, we take them seriously. When a story is gut-wrenching, we find it to be extremely unpleasant or upsetting. When a person spills his guts, he is speaking truthfully and sharing everything. To say that she has a lot of guts is describing a person with a lot of courage and conviction and resolve. A crowd of people are anxious to find Jesus after he performs the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. So they get into boats and travel across the Sea of Galilee to the town of Capernaum and they see him there and Jesus senses what they're up to. Jesus says, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you got fed. The people are motivated by what they ate. When it comes to Jesus, they trusted their gut in a different sort of way. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Guts are good. In the practice of inventory, the best accounting practice, and if you've grown up with an accounting professor as a dad, you hear him say this in reference to lots of things the best accounting practices includes FIFO first in first out if you receive a shipment of widgets on the first of the month and on the 15th of the month you plan to have sold the first items by the time the second shipment arrives and if you don't you put them first Product rotation is a good thing, particularly if the products will spoil over time. How many people are guilty of looking in the milk case and getting the one just a little farther back? That leads, of course, to another acronym, GIGO. Not GEICO, GIGO. Garbage in, garbage out. If you put junk food in your mouth, you're going to look bad and you're going to feel worse. It tasted good, but eating good food and you are taking a step towards health and fitness. Not that this is new information to any of us. You are what you eat. This is the core of who we are. Jesus would agree. He says, do not work for food that, is, that perishes but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And of course, Jesus isn't saying stop eating. You have to eat to live, but the key word in this command is work. Remember that for later. The people of Galilee remember the ancient story of Moses and the wandering people of Israel. The manna in the wilderness, which God had given their ancestors, was called bread from heaven. But Jesus says to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Still thinking in that what you are is what you eat mentality, that sounds good, food that endures, you know, it has no expiration date, right? Mm. Bread from heaven, true bread, it makes your mouth water with real butter, none of that margarine stuff. Yet the people are still confused, so Jesus continues, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Such bread doesn't just taste delicious, but it actually gives life to the world. The people say with bated or buttered breath, Sir, give us this bread always. Yes, they want bread, and we cannot blame them. Most of us love and appreciate the various breads available from cultures around the world. How many people like sourdough? I like it. Handmade tortillas. Have you ever tried to make hand more? It's very easy. Water, flour, a little bit of oil, and then you cook it on a flat grill. And they're great. Seed-crusted Italian bread. 
buttery biscuits. We still make something around our house. They're, they're just stain, powder, powder milk or powder, baking powder biscuits, but we call them Stella biscuits because I use a recipe from a lady named Stella. Bread turns staple grains, such as wheat or rye or corn, into durable foods. Boy, I forgot about cornbread. Oh, who doesn't like good cornbread with a bowl of chili? You know, or, well, today maybe not, but we know that bread is good down in our guts. But Jesus is not talking about something made of wheat or rye or corn. I am the bread of life. He tells them, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Jesus is presenting himself as the most basic, the most durable, the most nutritious form of bread available to us. I am food. Jesus seems to be saying, take me into yourself and you will never be hungry or thirsty or hopeless or powerless. I am the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to any life to anyone in this world including you. This is Communion Sunday. We gather around a table to receive the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. We remember that Jesus said, this is my body that is for you. He asks us to break bread and eat it together, believing that it is the body of Christ and the bread of life. We are nourished when we receive this food, strengthened by to be Christ's people in the world. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he is saying, I am food. I am food that brings you forgiveness. I am food that brings you new life. I am food that brings you health in your body and mind and spirit. Jesus is the food that endures for eternal life, the bread from heaven which gives life to the world. All we need to eat is this amazing bread in faith and thanksgiving. But at the same time, Jesus also wants us to know that we are food. When we eat the bread that is the body of Christ, we are nourished as the body of Christ in the world today. The bread that Christ offers is not designed to feed us as individuals. Instead, Christ's bread is meant to sustain an entire community. Because there is one bread, Paul said to the Corinthians, we who are many are one body. For all partake of that one bread. Yes, folks, we are food. The body of Christ, the bread of life, like Jesus, our challenge is to be good bread for a hungry world. So what is the recipe for this very special bread? First, we are people who believe in Jesus, deep down in our guts. When the crowd approaches Jesus in Capernaum, they said to him, what must, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answers them, This is the work, singular, the work of God, that you believe in him whom whom God has sent. Many Christians make a distinction between faith and works, but Jesus made it clear that the two should never be separated. You don't praise God on Sunday and cheat your client on Monday. So faith by itself, James said, if it, it has no works, is dead. Faith and works are essential to the Christian life, as is flour and water and yeast to a loaf of bread. Secondly, we are adaptable. Bread can be found in cultures all over the world. The nourishment of bread can be obtained almost anywhere, but it comes in a wide variety of forms. Ah, Boy, does that look good. Carbs, carbs, carbs. If we are going to be bread for a hungry world, we need to be adaptable as well. This means taking worship beyond the walls of this church uh, through live stream servicing. That's what we, we started uh, because we had to, but guess what? That is becoming the norm. 
we, should, we will keep doing this because it may reach more people. It includes gathering for theological discussions about our differences, but moreover, our similarities. It requires meeting people where they are by knocking on doors or chatting in laundromats or finding out what they want and need. The best ministry adaptations may still be out there waiting for us to discover. Finally, we are durable and nutritious. Anybody know what those are? And they're not saltines. Soldiers on both sides of the Civil War existed on these things. They're called hardtack. And let me tell you, hard is key in that word. When properly baked, they are hard. Soldiers would often soak them in coffee or soup prior to eating them as they had little flavor of their own. Another option at the time was to fry bacon and soak the hardtack in cold water and then fry the softened hardtack in the pork grease. Now, it's not the greatest food in the world, but it's nonetheless nutritious. As the bread of life, we need to have the guts to walk into challenging situations on the far side of our familiar places and comfortable routines. We provide real nourishment when we not only feed the homeless, but sit down with them and have a conversation. We advance the ministry of Jesus not only when we give donations to international missions, but fly to those countries and build friendships through short-term mission trips. I could swear we just talked about that, didn't we? In 1930, when her severely depressed husband committed suicide, a lady named Irma was 52 years old, and she lived down the street from my grandfather. She had never worked outside of the home, she had about $6,000 in savings, but she knew that wouldn't last forever. Her son had already grown up and left the home. Her daughter was about to be married, and soon Irma would be out on her own with no job, very little money, and no prospects. What was she going to do with her life? Irma happened upon a solution that astonished her friends and family she decided to write a cookbook. Irma was, by all accounts, a competent cook, uh, a slightly better than average baker, but nothing in her background suggested she was cut out for culinary fame. She knew nothing about publishing. The first edition of her cookbook was self-published in a day and age when that was not possible in 1931. She used half of her life savings to hire a local printer in St. Louis, where she lived. The printer had never published a book before. Marketing at first was largely by word of mouth, and Irma delivered copies to local bookstores herself. Unlike most cookbooks of the time, Irma's cookbook was filled with practical tips, stories, and witticisms. It was from that book, I learned that an eighth teaspoon measuring spoon, this is an eighth teaspoon. She says it right in her book. That's a, called a pinch of salt. She, it was a winning formula. Future professional published editions ran to over 18 million copies, making it the best selling cookbook of all time. the joy of cooking. The secret that made the joy of cooking so successful was in the title, that little word joy. Far from producing a dry technical manual, which was what most cookbooks were at the time, Irma spoke conversationally to her fellow homemakers, helping them have fun in the kitchen. She includes such great lines as, Dried beans really need an uplift, being kind of on the dull side. 
but like dull people, responding readily to the right contacts. Okay. May your rice never burn is a New York greeting of the Chinese. In St. Louis, it's may it never be gummy. The automatic bread maker is not as good as bread made by hand. But waking up to the smell of fresh bread is worth the price of admission. Simple, hearty, com comp competently, comp comp competent, good prepared food <laughs> is one of the great blessings of life and a significant source of joy. Irma Rohrbauer, Rombauer, as you can tell, a German, living in the hill district of St. Louis among Italians, knew that too easily we forget. Friends, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is for us all. True belief in Jesus requires acting as the body of Christ in the world. This means being adaptable, being durable, and being nutritious, always looking out to nourish a hungry world. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he is saying he wants us, he wants to feed us, there's no doubt about it, but he also desires that we be good food to others. And so may it be. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Most loving God, you have made us hungry for spiritual growth. Yet we remain malnourished until the time we receive the bread of life. Feed us now through your Son, that we may find boundless life possessing and strengthening us, enabling us to be your agents in this love-hungry world. Through Christ Jesus, our true joy. Amen. It suggested something this morning that I had never really thought about for in recent times. Our communion liturgy is based almost exclusively on the writings of Paul, who never met Jesus in person. In fact, in all of Paul's letters, he has no mention whatsoever of the acts or the parables or the things Jesus did in his lifetime because that's not important to Paul. What Paul is concerned about is that we believe in Jesus because of what he did. Yet the one time Jesus describes what Jesus did is in communion. So that's where, we, that's where we get our liturgy, and that's why you are invited to this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, people of God. Let us give thanks to God who loves us. Our greatest joy is to offer you our thanks and praise, creator, grace giver, and healer of our brokenness. All that is beautiful was created for our eyes. All that is wonderful was created for our awe. All that is majestic was created for our praise. All that is mystery was created for our silence. But despite everything you have given us, we were not satisfied. Believing life is about our appetites, we chose the moldy bread of the world. Knowing our only hope is from you, we continue to rebel. Called to live in unity with one another, we cling <coughs> to all which divides us. Yet you refuse to let go of us. Sending us your only son, Jesus, to call us to life in you. We have fallen and you have lifted us up. We have forsaken you and you redeem us. We are broken 
and you make us whole. Holy are you, God of grace and tenderness, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Though we look for him for all we though we look for him through for all the wrong reasons, he holds out the bread of life to us. Though we offer the cross to him, he graces us with life. Though we thirst for more and more, he offers us the cup of salvation. Though we gossip and slander one another, he speaks the truth in love. Though we divide each other by class, race, or condition, he calls us to be one. Recalling your steadfast love in Christ and knowing we cannot understand your grace completely until that eternal day when we can know your heart, we take this bread and this cup, praising and blessing you for these gifts of hope and joy. Holy God of truth, that we come to your table as many, may your Holy Spirit make us one body and one spirit. As you feed us with the bread of life, may we feed those who know true hunger. As your justice illumines our heart's darkness, may we be a beacon of light to the oppressed and lost. As you speak to us the truth in love, may we be a voice for the powerless and forgotten. As you restore us to wholeness, may we bind up our shattered world. Through Christ who saved us, all glory and honor is yours, God, who created us in your image through the Holy Spirit in our midst, making us your people now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the words which Jesus taught us to pray whenever we gather, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What did you tell me, Brian, that panic is not something that happens? We like to prefer things like, we have a situation. Well, our situation this morning was we had no communion. Um... That's not important. We can fix that. Thank you, dear. My wife went out and bought a loaf of bread for us, and I appreciate that because it's the symbolism that is necessary. But it isn't a panic. It's a situation. And the situation is this, that on the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, He gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the common cup and pouring it out before them, he said, this cup signifies the new covenant, the final covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Friends, come to the table of the Lord.
as we just heard from the gospel according to St. John, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. Also in the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. Join with me, won't you, in our closing prayer. Lord, send us into the world with your gifts to perform God's works of mercy in life. Let us go into the world with the bread of heaven in our hands, sharing Christ's grace, which gives life to everyone. Let us go as the one body of faith and fellowship so that we may witness to the one spirit of hope and faith. In Jesus we pray, amen. because it was up to the right tempo and you had such joy in your voice. Normally that's one of those hymns that you know, gets slower as it goes on and on. We are so blessed with great musical talent. Um, you may have noticed that I worked really long hours this week if you believed that my Jeep was here for 24 hours a day for five days this week. <clears throat> It was here for five days this week because there was a part that did not, did not work in the ignition. Now, I called my friend, the car mechanic back in Lena, and I, he walked me through the process of checking this and checking that to see if it was what it could be. And he gave me two possible solutions, one of which was relatively easy and one of which would have been let's just say pricey. I liked both options, except the pricey one. So I, I walked down the street to the Shell station down here. I don't know the fellow's name that works there, the mechanic, but I said, this is my problem, and this is what my mechanic has suggested. What do you suggest? And he said, well, I could do the first option if I could get the part, 
but it's going to cost you about three hours labor, and that'd be about 150 bucks plus the part. And the second one, which involves the transmission, I don't do it all. Okay. I said, fine. YouTube. <laughs> you can find anything on YouTube. Trust me. I found five different videos of how to fix this problem. I watched them. I ordered the part on Amazon, cost 10 bucks, got here on Friday. It took me a little while to do it. it. I don't know if it was three hours or not, but it took me a little while to put it together. And after that, it worked great. So then I went back down to the, fill, down to the shell station to talk to my new, newfound friend down there, and I showed him the part and where it was broken, and he looked at it, and he says, well, I learned something today. And I said, I did too. And, and, and we struck up a relationship, a friendship there. And he said, by the way, why, you know, I've never met you. Why, who are you? And I said, I'm the new guy down at the Fed Church. And he said, oh, really? Where's that? And I said, it's a block down the street. <laughs> and he didn't know that. I think he's a lifelong sandwich resident. But I got my foot in the door, and I told him who I was, and I told him who we were. We may not ever see the guy, but we got our name out there, and I told him we're a great people that love one another. We have our faults too, but that's, you know, not here nor there, but that's what it means to share the bread of heaven. Just that little step amongst people that you don't know. And even sometimes, like Kathy said, people you do know. You may have known them your whole life, and you, you kind of write them off as not being, well, I don't think they'll ever come around to. But then you get that opportunity. You never know when it's going to happen, and you do it. That's why I like to do funerals for non-church families, because it gets them at least exposed to the love that is ours through Christ Jesus. That's your job this week. I don't expect you to, con I don't, you know, for there's, there's, what, 45 of us here today. I don't expect 45 new converts next week, but that'd be great if it happens. I expect 45 people to have at least said something to someone that was nice and just, you know, Tell them they're having they're a good day. They don't tell them they, their hair looks nice or tell them that you like their shirt, even if it is a Cubs jersey. You know, share that love which comes to us from the bread of heaven. Go out this week in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, giving thanks and praise always. Amen. Amen.